Good morning, welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today we are going to make peach cobbler muffins for breakfast. I'm so excited, I love this recipe. I love peaches and it's just a nice change up from your regular old chocolate chip or blueberry muffins that the kids are always eating. So uh, this is super easy, simple recipe. I am going to use canned peaches. You can use fresh peaches if you would like. Um, we are gonna start with dry ingredients and I am going to use a cup and a half of flour. If you want to, you can preheat your oven to 375. That's what I like to cook my muffins at. Okay, so we have a cup and a half of flour. We're gonna do three fourths cup of white sugar. Let's see this will fit in there. That's actually just about right. And then we need two teaspoons of baking powder. One, two, and then we need half a teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna do half a teaspoon of cinnamon. If you like to bake or you're interested in other breakfast recipes, I have some banana protein pancakes. Actually, I have a couple of protein pancake ideas, um, recipes that you can check out. We have uh, chocolate chip banana bread that we have made recently. I have got veggie scrambled eggs, a breakfast casserole. That is a great one. The kids like that. Well, hubby really likes that one because I can make a spicy version, but... All right, so I think that's it for the dry ingredients. Now we're gonna start adding some of the liquid. Actually first, always give your dry ingredients a quick little stir together. All right, now we're gonna add in um, four tablespoons of butter. You can use just room softened butter. I kind of like to half melt my butter when I bake. Helps it mix in just a little bit easier. Depends on what you're making. And we're gonna do half a cup of milk. And then we need a fourth cup of oil. I'm gonna use canola oil. That was a fourth cup of oil. I know you saw me using the cup there. I've been baking a long time, so my eyes are pretty good at measuring. I don't necessarily need the exact measuring cups for it. Uh, let's see, I think we have vanilla left. We have a teaspoon of vanilla. I love this muffin recipe. My daughter, she is 11 and she loves to bake. She loves to help in the kitchen. So my pancake and muffin recipes and the bread recipes, they're super easy and she loves to help make them. So I love that these recipes are kid friendly. We need one egg. And then I believe we just have our peaches left to put in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and mix this real quick. Just kind of get all these ingredients in there together. Mm. 
Now your peaches, if you're using canned peaches, you do want to drain them and then dice them up into smaller chunks. That's mixed nicely. So we have the peaches here. I'm going to use quite a bit of the canned peaches here. Um, let's see. The recipe calls for about a cup of diced peaches, but I'll be honest, I really like them. So I'm adding them all in, but the recipe does call for a cup of diced peaches. So what I like about cooking and baking, you tweak the recipes to fit your family's desires. Let's mix those in. I could have diced them up a little bit smaller, but they're okay. I'm just gonna mix those in real nice. All right, I'm gonna go grab my muffin tin. Here we go. And then you want to fill up your muffin cups. Not quite to the top because your muffins will rise. So about three fourths of the way full. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. I have got lots of wonderful, easy, mostly healthy recipes on my channel. Love to do, lately we've been in, doing comfort foods. I'm gonna fill these just a little bit more. But I have recipes for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, game day, party potluck, baking, seasonal, uh, I just, I love to be in the kitchen. Okay, I think those are about even. I'm gonna grab my other muffin tin, fill it up, and we'll throw these in the oven. So this recipe makes about a dozen muffins, full-size muffins. I do uh, cook them in the oven at 375 degrees for about eight to 12 minutes. Every oven's a little different, so keep an eye on them. Good morning. Today we are going to make oatmeal chocolate chip banana cookies. This is one of our favorites in our home. We love everything chocolatey chippy and it's a great way to sneak in fruits into um, some snacks for the kids, for our family. So welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. If you're new, welcome. You'll find all sorts of wonderful, easy, homemade recipes. And if you're returning, thank you so much. Let's jump in. All right, so for our ingredients, they're gonna be listed in the description below, but we're going to need two bananas. We're going to need an egg. We're gonna need oats, flour, white sugar, brown sugar, baking powder, baking soda, butter, vanilla, salt, your chocolate chips. And I think that's everything. Let's just jump in. So I'm gonna start by doing my bananas. You wanna use two good sized bananas. Now, normally when I bake with bananas, I want them to be pretty ripe, but it's all right if they're not completely overripe, so don't stress. You don't have to wait till your bananas are completely brown and the peel before you can use them. So I'm going to put the bananas in a bowl um, you can use a fork to mash your bananas if you want. I am going to use our potato masher. Works pretty well. And we're gonna just mash away. Mashed. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, since we have, I call the bananas a wet ingredient, a liquid ingredient, because when they mush down, they get soft and liquidy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my liquid ingredients in one bowl and do my dry ingredients in another, and then we'll mix them together. So I need 
a teaspoon of vanilla. You hear me talking about this all the time, thing about being a baker, a cook. Just because you have a recipe doesn't mean you have to follow it word for word. Um, I happen to love vanilla, and so I usually add just a little extra. All right. So if you have a favorite ingredient you like to add, you can add a little bit more than what the recipe calls for. Don't want to go too crazy, but it's always fun to add a little here and there of your favorite things. Okay, we need an egg. Right there. And then we need two tablespoons of butter. Now I'm just using stick butter. This is actually um, sweet cream salted butter. I happen, this happens to be my favorite butter, so I use it in pretty much everything that I make. And then I'm actually going to go put this into a little bowl and sort of half melt it in the microwave. My butter has not been sitting out, so it's definitely hard butter. And you really want to have kind of room temperature softened butter to mix into your wet ingredients. All right, I have my butter kind of partially melted. We're gonna go ahead and pour that in there. We'll give this a little stir. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the dry ingredients. I'm gonna start with the flour. And we want one cup of flour which seems like not very much when you're making cookies, but your bananas is a good filler, and so it kind of takes the place of your flour a little bit. And then we need oats. These are oatmeal banana chocolate chip cookies, so I'm gonna get my oats here. And I'm going to do one and a half cups of oats. One and a half. And then we need a fourth cup of regular white sugar. And I'm just gonna eyeball it here. I'm using my cup to measure, but you want a four, one fourth cup of white sugar. And then we need a half a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna set that in there. And usually with brown sugar, you kind of pack it in just a little bit. That's about good. Dump that in there. And then we are going to do a half teaspoon of both baking soda and baking powder. And then we need a fourth teaspoon of salt. Just good old table salt. I have made uh, cookies with sea salt before too. Um, so you could totally add sea salt if you wanted to instead. But I like the smaller grains of regular table salt. And I believe that is all of our dry ingredients minus the chocolate chips, which we add in last. So I'm gonna grab my spoon Mix the dry ingredients together first. If you like bananas and chocolate chips, you guys, I have an amazing, amazing cherry, 
banana chocolate chip banana bread. It is phenomenal. So I will link to that recipe. That is a huge breakfast winner in our home, especially for my son. If you have picky kids, he will not eat just plain old bananas. I put bananas in banana bread or into these cookies. He will just wolf them down. So as a busy mom, I'm always looking for ways to get the kids to eat more fruits and vegetables. However, I can sneak them in. Okay, that's good and mixed. I'm going to go ahead and add our wet mixture here. Now I'll tell you if your family likes peanut butter, you could add a couple tablespoons of peanut butter to this recipe and it's delicious as well. Or you could add some nuts, some walnuts or some pecans if you wanted to. I wanna make sure you get all of the dry ingredients incorporated there. The bananas are very, very moist, so it just kind of soaks right into the flour. I've got a little bit at the bottom here, so I'm trying to work that in. These are very, very moist cookies. It is fall, so it is definitely baking season, season for me. And uh, let's see, I did peach muffins peach cobbler muffins, which got eight in like two days, um, late recently and, uh, coming up soon, I'm doing our protein balls. If you guys have ever heard of those energy protein balls, we love to make those in our household. We do all sorts of varieties. So I have those recipes coming up yet this fall. I'm very excited for that. We are ready for chocolate chips and this recipe calls for one cup of chocolate chips. I'm going to share a little secret with you guys. If you are ever just getting your package of chocolate chips, um, one package of chocolate chips is about two cups worth. And I was down to about half a bag. And as you can see, it's almost exactly a cup. So one bag of chocolate chips is about two cups worth of chocolate chips. Just so you know. <laughs> we are going to pour that in. Oh, yeah. Mix these together. And my oven is preheating to 400 degrees. So every oven is a little different. My oven, if you're unsure of how your oven bakes, always set it a little bit lower temperature than what your recipe says. If you know your oven pretty well, my oven tends to cook things too fast if I set it too high. So I like to do my cooking and baking at a little bit of a lower temperature and let it bake a little bit longer. So mine's set at 400 degrees and these will probably take uh, maybe eight minutes or so to bake in the oven. And I am going to get my cookie sheet and we're gonna put these on there and get them into the oven. My first round of cookies is ready to go in the oven. I'm going to let them cook for about seven or eight minutes and then I will check them. Um, this recipe is gonna make probably close to about 20 cookies or so. And I cannot wait to eat these. They're gonna be so good. The oatmeal banana chocolate chip cookies are done. I have them in a dish ready for the kids when they get home from school to start snacking on. So yummy.
Thank you all for watching today, and we will see you all next time. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today I am making one of my favorite bread recipes, cherry chocolate chip banana bread. This is definitely uh, one of my son's favorite recipes for me to make. And uh, it's super simple, super easy. It's very moist, delicious bread, perfect for breakfast or taking along with your lunch. It's great for um, gatherings, taking it to church, those kinds of things. So I have the recipe, y'all. It's going to be listed below. Um, and then I have a picture of it I will share also uh, here and now. So let's jump in. So um, I am definitely what I call a country baker. Um, been baking for about 20 years. So my recipe is um, more to the touch. Um, I'm not an exact recipe. You can follow the exact recipe that I'm posting, but this is more of a feel, more of an experience kind of thing. Um, my bananas I happen to have are, um, you want to use um, slightly overripe bananas and that makes them soft, uh, makes the moisture perfect. My bananas are a little bit on the small side, um, <laughs> but that's okay. We were traveling and so I wanted smaller bananas for the kids. Um, we ended up not eating all of them. So I am probably going to use three to four of these bananas. Normally I would use two bigger bananas for my banana bread recipe. I have got my potato masher all ready to go. My daughter loves to help bake, uh, but they are back in school now. So I am going to just make this while it's super easy. You can see the bananas a little bit overripe. It's perfectly fine. You're just gonna unpeel your bananas here. There is no mixer required for this recipe. I love that I can just mix it all together with a spoon. We're gonna just peel these guys toss them in and again I am gonna eye this eyeball this the amount of banana normally two to three regular good sized bananas I think today I'm using four of these tiny ones one more in there kind of depends how much banana you like to have in your banana bread now you can do all sorts of things with your banana bread recipe. You could add walnuts or other kinds of nuts. Um, you could add some extra seeds, um, whatever you want. My kids, my daughter loves chocolate chip and my son loves uh, cherries. So that's what we put into ours. All right, here. So we're gonna give these a good little mash. This is usually one of my daughter's favorite jobs. Mash them up real nice. Some people like to uh, pre-measure all their ingredients. I do not, I just grab it and go. Some people like to do separate bowls, like put all their liquid ingredients in one bowl and then their dry ingredients in the next bowl. I like to save on dishes, friends. I like ease and simplicity in my kitchen. Save myself some time and energy. All right, that's mashed up enough. So now we are gonna continue to add some of our liquid ingredients into here. Um, we're gonna do some vanilla. Vanilla is key. Um, so my recipe is about a teaspoon of vanilla. I personally love vanilla. Sometimes I sneak in a little bit extra for flavor. Usually that's when I'm doing cookies. Get that in there. I am the one thing I do do separately, y'all. When I am baking, I always crack my eggs in a separate bowl. We usually get farm fresh eggs from friends of ours, and so you never know with farm fresh eggs. So I always make sure I crack them separately in a different container. Um, one of our liquid ingredients is also going to be butter. I like to use salted sweet cream butter. Um, we're going to use a half a cup. So I have a stick here that's half cup. 
I'm gonna go get that melting in the microwave. I'm gonna get a container, a little bowl to crack my eggs in, and then we will continue on. All right, I'm gonna steep the bowl just a little bit. So I got my container for my eggs. I'm gonna use two eggs for this banana bread recipe. Now you can also make this into muffins. Your kids are really into muffins. So that egg looks a little bit good. So I'm gonna point this out to y'all. These eggs right here are actually store-bought eggs. You could tell because the yolk is really pale yellow. When you get farm fresh eggs, it's like a bright, dark, golden yellow. Um, I usually prefer farm fresh eggs. We just happened to have run out and I happened to have been in the store and we were traveling, so ease and convenience. Put that one in there, no shells, we're perfect. We're gonna dump that one in there as well. We're gonna go grab that butter. It's melting just a little in the microwave. So my butter here is almost complete, completely melted. I don't always melt it down this far. I just like to get it soft. It was definitely a really hard, cold butter. Um, while I'm waiting for that to cool down just a bit, this recipe calls for some yogurt. Um, I'm just, I use whatever yogurt I happen to have on hand. I normally do my grocery shopping at Aldi's, Fairway, try to save cut costs on groceries. Um, they have some great yogurt at Aussie's. I happen to have honey peach yogurt, um, so that's what I'm going to use today. Now the yogurt adds moisture. It's what helps make your uh, banana bread turn out really moist and perfect when it comes out of the oven. So this recipe calls for a third cup of yogurt. So we're just going to fill this up to a third cup. Um, another topping you could add to your banana bread is coconut flakes. My kids don't like coconut. I do, but they don't. So, again, trying to get them to eat it. So, I'm going to go ahead and dump that in there. All right, the butter is cooled a little bit, so we're going to dump that in there. I know a lot of people like to do dry ingredients first, but you know what? I like to do things my way, so there is no one way to baking. And the more baking you do, the more you learn little tricks of the trade, and the more you tweak things to your own preference and liking for yourself and your family. All right, that's mixed in nicely. So now we're going to start adding some of our dry ingredients. Um, I'm going to start with flour. And, woo, she's a little full in there. Now this recipe calls for two cups of flour. Let's see if I can do this without spilling. Go on in there. You can use a knife. I just use a finger, guesstimate there, brush off the top. There we go. I don't mind getting a little messy when I bake. Part of the fun. Now before I start mixing the flour in, I'm gonna add all my dry ingredients. Uh, we're gonna use, let's see, it's one and a fourth cups of brown sugar. Let me know down below what you like to add to your banana bread. I personally love to add walnuts. My kids are picky. They won't eat them. <laughs> so this is just, I'm making the banana bread as a breakfast option for my kids. My daughter will eat bananas plain. My son does not like bananas. He will only eat them in banana bread. And he has got football going on right now. So he's definitely hungry in the mornings, trying to get that teenager to eat some food before he heads off. So that's a little less than a cup. Um, and then I'm gonna refill here for another fourth cup. We're gonna go ahead and put that in there. Sprinkler all around. Since it was a little less than a cup, I'm gonna get a little closer to a half a cup. And you're like, why are you not packing this down? Well, we have another secret ingredient to this recipe that we'll get to here in a minute that also adds moisture um, and just makes the texture of your banana bread awesome. 
and so it's got extra sweetness to it and so I'm gonna um, not pack down that brown sugar because I don't need extra sugar in here all right we need pop this open a pinch of salt now I'm just gonna kind of pour into my finger here a pinch I kind of do a little bit more than a pinch honestly it's maybe two pinches worth uh, we have to do two teaspoons of cinnamon that teaspoon out here sprinkler around oh yeah put the caps back on I don't know about you all when you are baking with your kids my daughter loses the caps to everything bless her sweet little soul <laughs> perk of baking by myself everything gets put back where it came from with the lids on we're doing a pinch of nutmeg here adds a little zest to your flavor gotta remember the baking soda one teaspoon of baking soda Let's see if I can pop this here close enough all right I think we have everything taking a quick look it looks like it all right here's the secret ingredient I was talking to y'all about it is a pudding box now you can use really any kind of flavor of pudding um, this one happens to be vanilla it's what I had on hand you could use banana flavored I literally will use whatever we've got on hand again you're not really doing it for the flavor you're doing it for what it adds to the texture of your banana bread you can completely leave this out if you would like. I add this sometimes to my cookie dough mixes as well. Makes them a little extra soft. And you're just gonna add the whole entire thing in there, which seems like a lot, but it does its magic. All right, so we have two ingredients left. That is the chocolate chips and the cherries. Before we get that far, I am gonna go ahead and just mix this all in. And this is a high moisture bread batter. Makes it super easy for stirring it all together. It smells amazing. I love fall. Now I make banana bread probably three or four times a year, once every season, but I swear there's just something about baking it in the fall. Makes it smell that much better. Your house smells amazing. All right, we're ready to add chocolate chips. Now, these are mini chocolate chips. Um, it's only opened a little crack here. I think my daughter was making pancakes with them. Okay. You can add in however many chocolate chips you want. Now, my son's not a big chocolate person and he He's probably going to be the one that eats this more than my daughter. She would make it all chocolate. <laughs> Mix that in good. I feel like that's pretty good. You want the chocolate to give you just a hint of chocolate. Um, so now I have cherries. I usually get the name brand cherries. This happens to be Great Value brand. They apparently don't take their stems off. So I'm going to pause this real quick. Take stems off, dice these up, and then we'll toss them into our batter also. All right, I used maybe a dozen of the cherries, diced them up real nice and small. Again, you don't want your chocolate chips and your cherries and your walnuts to overwhelm the natural flavors of banana bread, the banana, the, cin the cinnamon nutmeg, and the vanilla. So again, you just want it to kind of add hints of flavor. Get on in there. We're gonna mix this up real nice. You don't want to over mix. Let's see, is that gonna be enough cherries? I think so. And they're good. Mm. All right, it's looking good. So I'm gonna get this into my bread pan. Again, you could use make it into muffins if you would like. Um, and then I'm gonna preheat my oven to 400 degrees. I like to cook my breads a little bit slower. Um, it just depends how much time you've got. 
I like to give them a little more natural, slower cooking time. And I will bake mine for probably about a half an hour, 35 minutes at 400 degrees. Every oven's a little bit different, so you just have to kind of keep an eye on it. Let's go get this into the bread pan. She is ready to go into the oven and we're going to check on it here in a little while. And then when it's all done, I'll pull it out, make a slice. You can see how moisturized, how delicate and amazing that this banana bread is going to be. The banana bread has been baking in the oven for about 15 minutes. So I was going to pull it out and show you what 15 minutes looks like. So if you give this a little shake, you can tell it's definitely not close to being done because the inside is still wiggly jiggly. So we're gonna put her back in the oven again. I usually bake mine for about 30, 35 minutes. So we'll um, check it again here in a little while. All right, I think she is about done. We're gonna do the toothpick uh, test just to be sure. So you take a toothpick, pull it in, pull it out. Oh no, so if you can see, if it'll focus there, there's still a little bit of batter dough uh, on the toothpick, which means it's actually not done yet. Even though, oh, see, and if you press down, still soft. It's okay for the top of your bread to get a little bit brown and crunchy. It's kind of how it's supposed to happen. So we're gonna pop her back in the oven for a few more minutes. She is done. I took a slice out, got some butter melting on it. It looks delicious. It is so moist, y'all. It kind of just came right apart as I put it on the plate. Perfect to use with a fork. I am super excited. Kids are going to love this. Hubby's going to love this. This is a must add to your fall baking list. We'll see y'all next time. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today we are doing a fall favorite apple crisp. I don't know about you, but every fall our family makes a trip to the apple orchard. Even though we have two apple trees in our own backyard, uh, it's just tradition. Our kids are getting older now and we still make that trip every fall. Um, so we have a whole basket of apples here. We've already made plain old cinnamon apples. My daughter loves those. But my husband and I really like the apple crisp, and so that's what we're going to do today. For this recipe, you're going to need five to six good-sized apples. You can see I have small and large apples, so um, the equivalent of about six good-sized apples is what you're going to want. You're going to need a little bit of brown sugar. You're going to need some cinnamon. Uh, we're going to need lemon, lemon juice, I should say. We're going to use some flour, some oats, and a little bit of white sugar as well. So to get started, obviously, we need to peel our apples. Um, actually, I'm going to put the plate. I'm going to show you a little trick. I have this apple peeler here, and I prefer to peel apples this way. Uh, my daughter absolutely loves to use this as well. It just makes peeling your apples super easy. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can just use a regular old vegetable peeler. Some people actually prefer to leave the peels on their apples. I personally don't mind either way. But we're going to go ahead and, it's been a while, I only use this like twice a year. <laughs> Got to always remember how it works. You just stick your apple on there and you start spinning and it will peel. I like to put the plate or a paper towel underneath. Catches the peels really easy. It makes it super easy to throw those away. This also slices your apples. As you go, saves you a little bit of work. Core comes right out. Love it. So we have our apples all peeled and halfway sliced. The thing I love about using that apple peeler is it 
spiral slices them this way. So then you literally just cut them once, maybe twice. This happens to be a pretty big apple. So I'm gonna cut that one twice, uh, works perfectly. Um, it just makes it really quick, really easy. This is a kid-friendly recipe. It's something your kids can totally help you make in the kitchen. Uh, my 11-year-old, she can pretty much make this by herself. And uh, with that apple peeler though, and with any kind of pe vegetable peeler, you do wanna make sure that yourself and any youngsters, they're using a little bit of caution because there are sharp parts to both the peel, peel, regular peeler and your apple core. All right, so we've got our apple slices here. They're not actually gonna all fit back in this bowl, I don't think. These are big apples. I think some of them were honey crisp. I honestly don't remember what kind of apples we have in our yard. One of them was sweeter and one of them was meant for baking. Okay, good enough. We're gonna just skew that all to the side and get our mixing bowl and start with our dry ingredients. So, we are going to start with the oats. I like to start with the oats. And um, the recipe that I use, it calls for three-fourths cup. With this whole recipe, use common sense, use your eyes, uh, because your apple sizes really can vary. So you might need a little bit more of these ingredients, you may need a little less, so just kind of gauge based off your quantity of apples that you have. We like a little bit of the crunchy stuff on top, so I put in a little bit more oats than the three, four, three quarters cup. And then we need a cup of brown sugar. I'm using light brown sugar. Use whatever brown sugar that you want or that you've got on hand. This is gonna be about perfect to use up this bag. A little extra, doesn't hurt, I'm not gonna save that, so we'll just dump that in there. We got cinnamon. One and three fourths teaspoons of cinnamon, which I always kind of find it entertaining when recipes call for three quarters of a teaspoon. Like, just commit, man. Go all in, we're gonna go all in. I'm actually gonna do two teaspoons of cinnamon here. I think that cinnamon apples, apple crisp, is one of the best smells that you can have, the best aromas you can have wavering through your house when you make something to eat and to share. Um, let's see here, we have flour. We're gonna go ahead and do our flour. Now, I don't go overkill on the flour. It calls for three quarters of a cup. So I'm gonna aim for that pretty close, less than a cup there. And I'm gonna set this aside for just a moment because you're probably wondering if you're new to baking, new to cooking, you're like, why do we have a lemon? The lemon juice helps keep your apples from browning as much. It brings the citrus, just kind of helps bring out the flavor of your apples as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this really quickly. This is a juicy lemon. It is a big lemon. The recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of lemon juice to sprinkle in and around your lemons. Again, gauge base off the lemons you have. Some lemons are not as juicy as others. I'm gonna grab my strainer really quick. All right, I'm gonna do this a little bit slowly because I have a lot of apples in that bowl. We recently cut up a huge watermelon and it is currently taking up my large bowls. <laughs> so we're just squeezing into the bowls we got. I'm an easy peasy kind of cook. Use what you got on hand, make do. The fewest amount of dirty dishes is spectacular. Um, okay, so I have a few more apples over here on my plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sprinkle a little few drops of the lemon there on those. Again, I'm only using half a lemon. This was a big juicy one. And we'll just let that kind of sit on the apples for a minute. 
Some people I know will actually add a dash of nutmeg into their apple crisp as well. I like to leave that out. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a stir. I cook my apple crisp at about 350 degrees in the oven. Um, you can cook it a little bit hotter, but you don't want your mixture to burn. You don't want the top to burn. So I feel like cooking it slower helps the top part crisp up just nicely. Get this mixed in together real good. Now, I'm actually going to scoop out a little bit of this mixture, the dry mixture. Probably about half a cup, maybe three quarters of a cup there. I'm gonna add some extra oats. This is gonna be for the topping. This is the part that's going to get crunchy. Mix that up a little bit in there. Okay. And then the recipe calls for half a cup of cold butter sliced, uh, which is going to be a whole stick of butter. I use salted sweet cream butter. Use whatever butter you want, whatever butter you got on hand. Now your slices do not have to be by the tablespoon as on the little wrapper there just cut it however you like i'm going to throw a few dabs here into the topping mixture probably three of those the rest are going to get tossed into my big mixing bowl break that up mix this in Using the spoon to kind of chop up, chop up the butter chunks just a little bit more. All right, we are ready to add our apples. I'm going to start with this little plate full here first. Get those in there. Grab some of these that are on top. I really should be using a bigger mixing bowl. I've just been doing a lot of cooking and baking and then with that watermelon, out of the big dishes to use. So this is probably half of my apple mixture. This was actually only five apples instead of the six I told you to begin with. Some of my apples were really big. If you want another secret, little secret hack that I'm actually going to use because my bowl is a little bit on the small side is to get a gallon Ziploc baggie. This is super helpful if you have a second set of hands. I don't today, so we're just gonna wing it. Second set of hands helps you just kind of dump it all at once into your baggie. Basically, you just toss your apples in, and then you would dump your dry mixture into the apples. super duper secret of really good bakers improvisation it's the ability to improvise whether it's with the ingredients you have on hand maybe so you forgot something you're a little short on something so you got to swap for another ingredient or maybe you're using grandma's kitchen or friend you're at a friend's house and their ovens are different stoves are different mixture in there. I'm going to seal it shut. As you can see, this almost, this is my five apples. Most of those were big apples. Pretty much fills up that gallon Ziploc. And then it's kind of like when you have a meat marinade you got going on. You just work it in.
If you got kids, they'll have a heyday shaking this all over. All right, we're gonna clean this up for just a minute. Go grab our baking dish. I've already pre-sprayed pre my baking dish. The oven is warming up to 350 degrees. Uh, this is a smaller uh, baking dish. You can use a bigger one or use two if you have a lot. Um, if you are interested in making apple pie, I'm gonna share with you another little baking secret. Make this same mixture that we just did excluding the oats you can keep the oats in if you want and use this as your apple pie filling it tastes amazing so we're going to just dump this in spread her all around here oh yeah Could have gotten away with that bigger baking dish, but it actually will all fit in here all right. So there we go. And then that mixture that we had that was nice, we added the dabs of butter on top. Mix that in here. And then we're gonna kind of just sprinkle your mixture here on top. You want cinnamon and oats along the whole entire top. You want the butter to kind of be spaced out a little bit. Perfect, look at that. And then you're gonna bake this in your oven. I usually do mine for about 20, 25 minutes. I keep an eye on it. I check it about 15 minutes to make sure temperature wise, nothing on top is burning. And then I just keep an eye every couple minutes and check on it until I feel like the top has really crisped and browned up just to the perfect amount. All right, the apple crisp is done. It smells amazing. I cannot wait to have this tonight for dessert after dinner. You could put a little ice cream with it on top and have that melt. Ooh, um, you could also, if your family likes oatmeal, you could make this and put your uh, this as a topping in with your oatmeal and mix it in. Uh, you could put it on top of pancakes and waffles. Uh, just there's so many things you could do with apple crisp guys I hope you liked this recipe be sure to subscribe and stick around we've got all sorts of fall recipes coming your way comfort food things we got going on in slow cooker more baking recipes we'll see y'all next time